So I went over and did uh, some rooftop landings to an old abandoned grain elevator, and the height of the abandoned grain elevator is about 150 feet off the ground. Um, so if you're planning on doing a pinnacle approach or a rooftop landing or even a confined area, you need to have some sort of an idea of how to do a power check. And what a power check is, is a way to check the aircraft to see if, predictably, if the aircraft has enough power to be able to actually do the approach and landing that you're wanting to do. So, if you guys remember when we talked about helicopter performance charts, we're going to reference a couple of those. So if you were to look, the uh, first chart you want to look at is how much manifold pressure uh, can you pull. <clears throat> so, first thing you want to do when you look at the chart is make sure that you're looking at the correct chart, the R22 HP chart here. And so the elevation of where I was doing the, the uh, rooftop landing is, is right at 500 feet MSL. Ground elevation is about 350. Things 150 feet tall, that's 500 feet. Just to be a little even more conservative, let's use 1,000 feet as the elevation, right? So if we were to use 1,000 feet and we come up to 20 degrees Celsius, we can pull 23 and a half inches of manifold pressure, all right? So 23 and a half inches manifold pressure. The next chart that we want to look at is going to be our out of ground effect hover chart. And again, because if the aircraft will do an out of ground effect hover at that altitude that you're wanting to do a pinnacle approach, rooftop approach, or even a confined area, uh, you know, then you know that you're going to have plenty of power. Right? So again, one of the most important things to do is to look at the correct chart. Right? And there's several of these in the R22. This is the R22 HP chart. Right? And the max gross weight on an eight, on an R20 R22 HP is 1,300 pounds. So if we were to look at our chart here at 1,000 pounds, and here's our 20 degree line, bring that over, and it's way past max gross weight. So according to this chart, it will do an out-of-ground effect hover even at max gross weight, 1,300 pounds at a 1,000 uh, foot altitude and a 60 degree, 60, roughly 65 degree day, which is 20 degree, roughly 20 degrees Celsius. All right. Okay. So <clears throat> I use my, here's my official weight and balance right here. Uh, the empty weight of the aircraft is 865 pounds. Unfortunately, I weigh about 215 these days, and I had about 90 pounds of fuel on board. So my uh, total weight is 1,170 pounds. I'm way below max gross weight. So looking at my manifold pressure chart, uh, you know, I can get up to 30, uh, I'm sorry, 23 and a half pounds. If I'm looking at the out of ground effect hover chart, at this temperature, at this altitude, the aircraft should have no problem uh, doing a um, out of ground effect hover and thus, you should be able to make a rooftop landing without much, much difficult at much difficulty at all. All right. There's another power check that some people do, and uh, what you can basically do is slow the aircraft down to basically minimum descent speed. And so for an R22, again, that's 53 knots, right? So we slow the aircraft down to 53 knots. We've looked at our chart. We know we have 23 and a half inches of, of manifold pressure available to us. And if we slow it down to 53 and we're in level flight at 53 knots and we have an excess of four to five inches of manifold pressure, say we're only pulling 19 and a half or 19 or whatever, we know we have about four and a half inches of manifold pressure uh, available to us uh, over, over and above uh, what it takes to do the uh, level flight at, um, at that altitude. So some people use the four to five inch rule. I don't know if it's, you know, Four if you're not very conservative, five if you're more conservative. But uh, you can also do a power check with that. And so if you've done a power check there, uh, you know, and you see that you have four to five extra inches of manifold pressure, then you're good. You've looked at the o OGE chart, that, that's, you know, you're convinced that thing will do an outer ground effect cover at the altitude and temperature that you're going to be doing it at. But then there's a little thing called reality, all right, in that what you could do is when you arrive where you're going to do your pinnacle approach at one of the things you can do is go up to a, have enough height above the ground so that if you get into settling or whatever you can recover it or before you get into settling you can recover it and actually do an out of ground effect hover so um, one of the videos that i'm going to show you at the end of this is going to be some guys that did exactly that they tried to come in for a pinnacle landing at quite a high altitude ended up getting low rotor rpm 
and they actually saved it, but they came about as close to crashing as you possibly can. So, so the first video I'm going to show you is where I actually came to an out of ground effect hover and went up 100 feet above the 7,500 feet above the uh, my landing spot and put the thing in an out of ground effect hover and it had no problem doing the out of ground effect hover. Now, somebody's probably going to catch me and go, well, let's see, that's only about uh, 200, 225 feet above the ground, so weren't you in the crappy part of the the shaded part of the height velocity curve and uh, yes I was would it have been safer had I gone up another 200 feet and done an out of ground effect hover at say 500 feet off the ground yes it would have been but I didn't do that I did it at the lower end so admittedly that you know would have been safer had I gone up some so in this first uh, video you're going to see is basically just me coming to an out of ground effect hover uh, next to where I'm doing the landing So you guys probably noticed I was off to the side of the building <clears throat> when I did the out of ground effect uh, hover. You know, the last place you want to be when you figure out that you don't have enough power to actually uh, accomplish the landing is when you're on short final and you got a big ass building staring you in the face. So, so you know, you want to do these power checks off to the side, not on the approach and some, you know. So you want to do it where you've got to leave yourself an out when you're doing it. Okay, so the next video you're going to see is uh, just me doing the approach um, to the rooftop. Get on the go. So the next video that you're going to see is um, these guys are flying an R44. It's a Raven One because I can see a uh, carb temp gauge on the on the da on the uh, panel, so I know that it's a Raven One. Raven One has less horsepower than a Raven Two does, uh, so keep that in mind also when you're uh, if you're going to be operating high uh, uh, high altitudes. Um, you, you can only see the front two passengers in the aircraft. I'm not sure if there's two people in the back seat. They've got the doors off, so it's relatively warm, I'm sure. Uh, I don't know how much fuel they had on board. I really didn't pay attention to it. But um, you'll see that um, they were trying to come in and make a landing on a ledge. Um, and to be very honest with you, I didn't see any place ahead of the aircraft that I thought was amenable to landing anywhere. But anyway, they're coming in for a landing and as you see, about the time the aircraft goes uh, back through translational lift, the guy gets a low rotor horn. And uh, we'll take a look at the video here.
So looking at the video, uh, you can see that um, the altimeter reads uh, right at 5,000 feet. And looking at the fuel, uh, I actually went back and looked at the fuel. There's slightly less than uh, half on the main and only about a quarter tank on the aux. If there were the only two in the aircraft, that should have put their max gross weight somewhere around 1950 to 2,000 pounds. Um, if you look at the performance charts, and let's say they weigh 2,000 pounds and they're at 5,000 feet. If you look here, here's 5,000 feet, and let's say it's a 20 degree day, over to 20 degrees and straight down, it's about 2,120 pounds. I'm guessing that if there were no backseat passengers, they only weighed about 2,000 pounds. So, and this is the OGE hover chart, out of ground effect hover chart. Well, this chart says that they should have been able to hover out of ground effect. And then again, like I say, there's that thing called reality that shows up. And you need to really be able to check to make sure that the thing's going to do it. Near inside the mountains, they could have gone way over to the center of a valley, been several hundred feet off the ground, tried to come to an OGE uh, hover and to see if the aircraft would actually do it prior to trying to make an, uh, the approach that they did into the um, that spot. So, uh, like I say, <clears throat> always a good idea to do some sort of a power check to have at least a reasonable expectation that the aircraft will actually do what you expect that it should be able to do. So.